We're here at the Idle Jordan Museum of American Indians and Western Art to uh, help uh, your viewers get a, a view of the Guitars Roundups to Rockers exhibition. It's an exciting show and we want people to come. You can see great guitars at other museums uh, and in private hands if you have access. We've had wonderful feedback on the exhibit from the major collectors and the museums that have loaned, and they're telling us they think it's one of the best guitar shows they've ever seen. It's not an opportunity that you want to miss. Guitars Roundups to Rockers is over 100 instruments covering the time span from 1793 to the present. Um, you get a wonderful dose of the history of major brands such as Martin, Fender, Rickenbacker, uh, Gibson and others. You see prototypes and experimental guitars that are essential to the history of electrifying the instrument. These are pretty telling instruments. As we were planning the exhibit, we really began looking about at what the story was about guitars and the American West. That's, that's what our mission is. But we also wanted to look at what was unique about instruments and music in the West. Not only what was brought to the West, but what was created in the West that influenced the rest of the world. And a big part of that is the history of how people developed new instruments that were louder, basically. And that story of amplifying the guitar almost entirely is to the credit of people in the American West. Musical forms that originated in Seattle or uh, on the beaches of California or in the studios of Los Angeles or uh, popular forms of music in you know, blues in Texas, for example. Uh, those are all musical forms that uh, are known to the rest of the world. Technology helps us to bring the, the guitars alive. Uh, we can have pretty guitars in a case that are completely silent and it can be a good experience, but using technology we can bring those, muse those museum objects, the guitars, uh, into a different level. So our staff produced a variety of experiences. You can pick up a guitar and, and, and play it. Uh, but you can also go to iPads and learn about different types and styles of guitar playing, uh, the different roles that uh, guitars play in a, in a band. Um, you can check out for free uh, an iPod and at almost 70 different locations in the exhibit you can either hear the precise instrument in front of you being played by a famous player or you can hear uh, the kind of music played on, say, a very early instrument. So it helps to give a greater dimension and richness and to present the real art that came from the instrument. It's an adventure trying to get them. And uh, we've had a wonderful time working with colleagues at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Experience Music Project in Seattle, the Autry National Center in Los Angeles, the uh, National Music Museum in South Dakota. We normally work with colleagues studying things they have and arranging to make loans. Uh, being able to contact collectors and players is not always easy. Um, in some cases we, we have connections with people like Vince Gill who are collectors and players and they're very open to sharing uh, their, their instruments uh, with the public. In other cases, you can't get a hold of people. The Doug Irwin guitar made for Jerry Garcia. It's the guitar named Tiger. Um, as uh, people in, in Indianapolis know, one of the great collectors here is Jim Ursay, owner of the Colts. He's passionate about music and guitars. And Jerry Garcia's Tiger is one of his collection. The sound clip that you hear with that guitar is the famous uh, Grateful Dead song, Truckin'. And we picked a version of that that we knew was recorded at the time he was playing this, that guitar. And by coincidence, it's, it's one that was recorded in Noblesville at Deer Creek. So there's a real piece of Indiana there. The case we have on Hendrix is one that we found most satisfying to do. The Experience Music Project loaned us his early Les Paul electric guitar. It's not the guitar he's best known for, it's usually a Fender Stratocaster, but the fragment we have is a fragment of a Stratocaster that he broke on stage in London in 1969. These are really special things, and there's a magic about them. It, it, these are, are real things. These aren't souvenir guitars that uh, have someone's signature on them. This is, this is the real deal, and that's what you don't normally get to see.